Alrighty, welcome back everyone. It is Laughing Games here. I am back and it is time for another StarCraft 2 1 versus 1 replay cast. This one is gonna be good, seeing as how in the bottom right hand side of the map we have got probably my second favorite active Terran. Yeah, I'll go with that. It's Cure. And the monster Zerg being his opponent, it's Rogue. Uh, this is this here be a replay from the Alima League uh, weekly StarCraft II Korean Cup, which has some of the best players playing it. Like uh, it's not uh, not an everyday event, which you get Rogue and Kier to play in a best of five, or I mean uh, best of three, best of five. I'm not sure what this was, but we're just casting the one game for now. If you guys do enjoy seeing them, though, let me know, and uh, maybe I'll cast some more of it. Uh, but yeah, make sure to hit that like button, ladies and gentlemen, if we can break 50 likes on this video, that would be amazing. And there's already something noteworthy in this game here. It's a command center first from Cure. Uh, that's a pretty rare build in TVZ. Terrans have been being pretty greedy as of late. Cure apparently trying to take it to the next level with a CC first against Rogue. And I love this because Cure is a Terran player who you think might just go for like a proxy two racks or something quite often more likely than a command center first the rogue may be thinking of that and he may be like oh what's going on what's going on uh in reality yeah just a very very economically focused build from Kier. i'm a big fan of this kind of play rogue on the other hand just doing usual zerg stuff uh it's pretty rare that zergs Zergs don't really get to go for like three hatcheries before pool these days, so it's like, ah, uh, there's no crazy Zerg openings. Uh, but yeah, I know it's a little late into this video already, but Happy New Year's, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone's gonna, gonna have themselves a great 2021. I'm not gonna go on some long, long tangent about my year and things like that. Maybe, maybe another time. But, uh, yeah, 2020. Definitely was a year. Had its ups, had its downs, but uh, I do hope that everyone is uh, is doing okay. Regardless, though, we got some good StarCraft to tide you over. Speed is on the way for Rogue. He's just mining a little bit of gas, so no crazy aggression. That's one of the main tells you can see by looking at a Zerg, whether they're still mining gas after they start their Ling speed, as that indicates a quick lay or something like that. Cure, on the other hand, is going for a two racks play. Now throws up a factory, so it's kind of like a CC first into a pseudo 2 1 1, it looks like. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's got got a tech lab on that rack so he can start stim, start up his marine production, and his factory is on the way. So, really interesting play by Cure. I'm not sure if Rogue has seen this, and he actually hasn't. So, Rogue has got no idea of the odd timing that Cure has. If he did, he might be being a little bit greedier or so. Uh, but in reality, yeah, this this is an interesting build by Kier. It's a 2-1-1, which is a very, or was a very common build for Terran. Which Terran gets across the map, two medivacs, lots of stim marines, that kind of thing. Uh, now, the thing is, this is off the back of a command center first, and I'm honestly unsure how that times out compared to something like a regular Reaper expand. It's like a Ling for Rogue is going to run up this ramp. Good reaction by Rogue. Turns that Ling around, keeps it alive. That's, that's a very nice job by him. One of the things about these good Zerg players is they always have Lings in position for vision. Look at this. Ling here, Ling there, Overlord here, Overlord there, Overlord there. Just getting as much map vision as possible. And this other Ling is going to run out. Where's it going to go? Somewhere to get good map vision, no doubt. Yeah, right there. There's already a Ling up here. Rogue wants to know exactly what's coming his way. With seeing those marines, he might be a little bit suspicious of what's coming his way, but oh, look at this, Cure is actually changing it up very significantly. I expected a classical 2-1-1, but if we take a look, he's actually producing Hellions out of his factory. He's not going for double medivac, and he's building an armory, so this is going to be an absolutely lethal push by Cure. He's got stimmed marines he's gonna have hellbats and medivacs to support those stim marines in tow this is actually just one of my favorite builds in the game terrans incorporating stim with hellbats just it is such a strong thing the marines put out the damage the hellbats are amazing against lings and they do such a good job buffering all the while uh the medivacs can heal up everything it's just such a beautiful combo we see here he's got 
combat shield on the way behind this. Now, he doesn't have an eBay out, doesn't have a third base out yet, so he does need to get some sort of damage done with this push. What do we see Rogue having to defend this? The answer is quite a decent amount of lings, 30 lings with 10 more on the way. The problem is, uh, 32 lings is what you generally want in order to defend a regular 2 on one This is incorporating Hellbat, so it's going to be a little bit different. We, so we do see Rogue, he's firing up a rather high amount of Bane lings, quite a big investment to defend this early on, but oh, Cure Stim's Ford, he's going to have to be careful, dodge those Bane lings. So far, a pretty good split from Cure, actually a rather good split from Cure. That being said, the Hellbats were isolated while this is going on. There is a counterattack by Rogue going towards the base, and oh, it looks like the Medivac got picked off Cure. He's got these Marines stimmed. Can he get to the natural and pick off some drones? He should at least get a few for his efforts. However, all the Marines will be cleaned up. This counterattack is going to be shut down, however, so nicely done by Cure, keeping that safe. Uh, in the end, though, he only gets four drones. That being said, I'm not sure that was the worst thing in the world for Cure, as if we do take a look, Rogue stopped at about 40 drones to hold that off, so a rather low drone count compared to what some other Zergs might have gone for. So great read by Rogue in order to defend that, of course, for uh, Cure. He did get the damage he, he wanted done. I think he maybe could have got a few more drones if he ran those marines up north a little bit sooner, but of course he was dealing with the counterattack. So, really interesting scenario there, the fact that it was just stimmed marines with no medivac to support them. But yeah, not, not the usual thing, and interestingly enough, now we see Cure seemingly going to be going into high widow mine production with drilling claws on the way, an extra factory on the way already, probably going to pop that there. He's got plus one attack on the way. He did go for two armories, so we should be seeing plus one armor on the way after that. Third base is on the way up for Cure. Fourth base is on the way up for Rogue. Uh, just because of the nature of how Cure didn't actually get that much done, I'm gonna go ahead and say I think Rogue has got a slight lead in this game. It's nothing super significant yet, but still, very, uh, very nice hold by Rogue is all I can say. Like, Zergs get caught off guard all the time by pushes like that, but not Rogue. He's now got to deal with these Marines for Cure coming on in, though. They've got Combat Shield, so uh, they're actually doing pretty well against these Lings as they retreat. The three Medivacs that support them is very significant, as opposed to just the usual two with a drop like this. Uh, looks like Rogue is going to push this away, though. Great targeting on the Medivacs with the Queens. And yeah, Cure just not enough units in order to make something happen. A poor Overlord is going to get picked off. But uh, both these players are playing very, very good StarCraft 2. That being said, Rogue is about to have Mutas out. He's got about six coming out, so he actually may be able to shut down these Medivacs. It's going to have to be a boost away from Cure to get away with these units. Rogue may try and wrap his lings around to secure a kill on this, as these marines have just unloaded to the top left, and yeah, these marines are done though. as the lings are now going to get on top of them, the mutas will be able to secure kills on this, there's no escape for these boys, that's actually rather painful for Kier, going to be losing three full medivacs, he's sending them in different directions to hopefully keep some alive, but that's just not going to be the case. That being said, while that goes on, it's a double widow mine dropped by Kier, able to kill off seven drones nicely. Nicely done by the Terran player, getting some damage even though he was taking losses, and oh my god, four Widow Mines out on the map, I was wondering what that was. Uh, those Mutas just got wrecked. Uh, yeah, Rogue wasn't paying attention while dealing with this drop. All four Widow Mines got burrowed, and just, he just loses so many Mutas. Really, he only lost five Mutas, so that wasn't that bad, uh, comparatively to, I mean, four Mine Shots is four guaranteed Muta kills, so there really was just one extra, but... Ouch, that was, that was unpleasant. And all oh, these mines are actually going to recharge so, so close. Rogue is able to clean those up. While this is going on, though, those widow mines are going to reburrow towards the north of this fifth base. Looks like Kier might be resecuring this location. Rogue's going to run up. Widow mines goes off, hits some of the lings. Great splitting by Rogue, showing his proficiency at that. Widow mines are going to burrow once again, try and get some connections, hit, hitting quite a few lings. Now heading towards the natural base. Kira is just going ham on the Widow Mines this game. This is actually ridiculous how many Widow Mines we're seeing. Mines are going to get shots off on the Mutas, which is rather nice. Uh, for reference, a Widow Mine costs 100 resources, whereas a Muta costs 200. The so Widow Mines generally do pay for themselves. And if we take a look, these Mines are still getting more damage done as Kira gets a drop off at Rogue's third base again. While this is going on, though, we do just have to kind of be in awe at the proficiency of Rogue. He's getting dropped all over the place. He's lost 22 drones this game, but he's still at 89 workers and climbing. A hive's on the way for the Zerg player. 
That being said, he doesn't have his 2-2 started yet, whereas Kier does. Kier's got a fourth base about to finish up, so he'll be able to just have that Terran economy going, and we could be heading into a later game, but gosh, the Widowmine drops are just relentless from Kier. He is loving those. He's killed off eight mutas as well for 15 widow mines, which is actually an all right trade. And then the drones and the lings on top of it. So the mines have been doing quite all right for Cure. Another drop is moving out. A little bit ambitious with this one. Will be cleaned up. Uh, maybe it's time for Cure to uh, put a pin in that. But now we see. I mean, Cure just actually even as Sean supply with the Zerg, but in a way ahead because he's got higher army supply, lower worker supply. He's going to have his 2-2 before the Zerg player as well, which could be a good window. And he's getting up his fourth base, which isn't half bad. Uh, looks like Rogue is planning to push a little bit, but Rogue doesn't have a super high Baneling count. In fact, he's only got seven, which is definitely a weak point in his style. At some point, he's going to need to get more of those Banes. He's going to crash through this wall, get some kills, hopefully. But there's already Hellbats waiting here. These Banelings are just rolling on this uh, Supply Depot. Uh, don't let them in. Uh, two Banes are going to roll towards the space. The Hellbats will take care of it, though. Oh, uh, looks like the Bane will hit a ton of SCVs, but uh, not able to uh, clean... Not able to get any kills. Here actually sends two Medivacs over to heal up all these SCVs. I really did like leaving the two Hellbats there to help uh, clean this up. The Widowmine goes off, hits some of the Lings, uh, as this wall is under attack, but for now... Rogue not getting much counter damage done to cure. The mutas are going to come on in, but the Terran player is just sitting back at home, so he's able to basically shoo away any damage. A general rule of thumb when it comes to watching a pro gamer play, it's that, and generally pro gamers, this, this is going to be the case. If there's nothing else going out on the map, a single drop, a single counter attack is not going to get too much done. And right now we see Kira actually getting uh, another Widowmine shot off at the fourth base, but all Banelings coming in from the south. Looks like great splits by Kira, though, nullifying a lot of those Banes. I was surprised when he went so far forward on Creep. He is going to have to back up, however. Like, Widowmine going to go off. Great split by Rogue. Rogue, gosh. Just so amazing with his splits. Uh, now we take a look. Fifth base is on the way for Kiri. He's going to want to get that up as soon as possible. Terrans don't like to dilly-dally these days when it comes to getting up extra bases because you want to have that strong economy which can withstand counterattack blows and things like that. Rogue, however, this game has uh, been just getting really what he wants. I mean, he's got Banelings on the way. He's got Adrenal Glands. He's got his uh, Carapace on the way. He's going to have his 2-2 finished up. Soon 3-3 three, three should be on the way. So Ultra Ling Bane soon going to be the composition for Rogue. Kira has yet to get a lot done, and he's run away with all these Marines. Has to load up and do his medivac to retreat, though, boosting away. Widowmines do, however, get some disgusting shots off on uh, that Zerg army. 14 Lings killed by that one Widowmine. We see uh, Kira just constantly going on with his Widowmine drops as well. Uh, yeah, what a game. What a game between these two players so far. Now, Kier does look like he just wants to try and hammer his way through the front of the Zerg player. He's been going for Widowmine drops. That's just been his main consistency this game. But at some point, he's going to have to make something else happen. He's going to step forward with these Marauders, clean up some creep, which is very important. Uh, Rogue's going to surge forward a little bit. Lots of Banelings, but they are going to get cleaned up. We see there is an attempted counterattack by Rogue towards this base. Kier is aware that the Zerg player might have gone for something like that, though has units in position. Here is also securing a base to the top right as the Zerg surges forward. Looks like Rogue trades out a lot of his lingus. He's still got a decent number of Banes in his army, but that really is going to be the style of Rogue. He's at 101 drones for the Zerg. That basically means that he's not going to have a super strong army overall because of his supply cap, but he is going to be able to just throw units at the Terran non-stop, hopefully whittle down the army of Pure, and now he's going to move forward. Ultra's Bane is going to clean up a lot of this bio, force the Terran to boost away. Widowmines are going to be getting shots off as per usual. However, it looks like Rogue, but just by throwing units at the Terran, is going to be able to push him back. He'll be able to replace the units he lost, no problem, due to his absurdly high drone count. Kira has secured the space up to the top right. It's turning into a PF, but... Boy, oh boy, Rogue is looking mighty scary right now. He's basically just never going to run out of gas. He's, and by gas, I mean steam. 
As, uh, yeah, there's, I mean, he's just got 97 drones at the minute. He's able to replace any unit he loses, so as long as Cure doesn't start sniping off a ton of bases or whatever, Rogue can just keep trading. Just for ages and ages. We do see Rogue trying to get some harassment done to the Terran at this point in the game. The wall has to be rebuilt. There is lots of turrets in position, though, for Cure. He's got a Thor in his main base. Rogue is actually going to dive on top of this. The Thor gets some shots off. Going to kill off, like, one Muta only, though. Uh, the turret is going to secure another kill on a few more mutas, but Rogue really just being a pain to Cure, trying to pull him back. Looks like Cure, I think, cleaned up the top right, right base, or I'm not sure Rogue ever had that. But for now, though, he is having a backup. Upgrades are going to be denied. It looks like building armor is going to be shut down. Uh, Rogue may be thinking, hey, maybe I can get 3-3, but no, that's long since been done for Cure. We do see the Terran player now starting to add ghosts into his composition, but uh-oh, here's trouble for Cure. Rogue's gonna roll in with Banelings. Banelings and Ultras able to just go ahead, rinse that base, completely wipe it off the map, and I'm starting to get a little bit worried for Cure. A Terran losing a base is not a good thing if you don't have extras, like... It, I mean, if a Terran has an extra CC, losing a base, no big deal, but right now we've seen here he just lost 29 SCVs. Uh, he's been knocked down to three bases. He's got a couple of extra CCs on the way, but they were too little too late, it looks like, as his economy is going to be in a sorry state for quite a while. Marauders are tanking all the Banelings that Rogue has, as Kira is going for a desperate push onto Creep, just charging forward. He knows that he needs to get some damage done, but then he, at the same time, he knows he can't go any further. Looks like he's going to try and snipe off this base, however, but the problem remains for the Terran that the Zerg has got the bottom left bases. So even if Rogue does lose this base, Kier's still got a lot of work to do. He's still got basically no economy at this point. Knocked down to 39 SCVs on three bases. That's no good. We see an engagement in the center of the map that's not going the best for the Zerg player. But Rogue should be feeling rather comfortable in this position. All he really needs to do is get on par trades with Cure, and he'll come out ahead because it's literally 95 drones to 39. That's ridiculous. Cure's going to try and get his economy back online by securing both these bases at the same time, but Rogue is really in a commanding spot this game. He's got the tools to work with, and I'm rather concerned for Cure. We see Cure's like, ah, uh, do I attack or do I defend? I know that I probably can't go out and attack, so he's just, yeah, he's just going to try and get these bases back up at the same time, though, Kier having to put up with the pesky rogue who's going for a counterattack now. Going to be hitting the third base, which does have precious SCVs at this point. Kier really can't afford to lose any more of those. And so we do see Rogue just pushing, just pushing, testing the Terran wherever he can. Kier is, is doing an alright job defending for now. He's going to have these two bases as planetary soon, but he's still only on 33 SCVs. He's making Widow Mines because he knows he really can't afford anything else. And the issue for Kier right now is that Rogue, on his assailant, insane economy while he hasn't been trading out too much right now he's just going to be building up a bank 2k minerals uh, every minute that goes on that's that number is just going to grow and grow we see a few liberators on the way for cure which is interesting uh, i guess just to help deal with the mutas to help deal with the ultras widow mines are getting some shots off but boy oh boy cure is just stuck defending he's got a very very high army supply which is good for him but uh, he's going to have to take good trades if he loses too much of his army. Rogue will just roll over him. The Terran player needs to try and get some more SCVs out too, I think. Uh, needs to also get unsupply blocked as uh, losing that depot wall so many times has supply blocked him. Looks like Kier has had enough. He's going to try push towards the top left. While Rogue's army supply is only 112, he's got 39 Banelings in his army. So this is not going to be easy for Kier to deal with. He's trying to take the best best possible position that he can. He's hitting two bases at once right now. He's having to pull back with his Marines. Uh, some Marauders heading back. Looks like Ghosts do end up sniping down that Ultra. The Baneling count, though, for Rogue is just so high. It's basically just like a magic eraser. Just use the Banelings to clear everything. That being said, Rogue has now lost 
and just or has now gone down to only 10 banelings there's still a counter attack going on at this base though widow mines are burrowing trying to get some shots off on the mutas more mines popping out but it looks like the production of cure has been compromised so what you see is what you get for the terran player Kira's gonna have to go home now to try and defend his production. He's just gonna be losing a lot of units. The Mutas of Rogue are getting so much work done. Uh, Marines just getting picked off as they pop out. Widow Mines are burrowing, but Rogue's done an excellent job picking them off. Another Mine Shot does go off on the Zerg's force. Looks like the Mutas may have to retreat now. The rest of the Terran army is coming back. And we did see Kira take an R8 trade there. He was able to clear out two of the Zerg's bases. The problem remains though for the Terran. He doesn't have the ability to remax, whereas the Zerg player is now ahead on supply. Rogue, with his strong economy, was able to replace units after that trade. Whereas Cure was not, the Mutas also harassing was just icing on top of the cake. And look at this, Rogue wants to take this base here. If that isn't a, if that isn't a slight at Cure, I don't know what is. Cure now just running away. Rogue's feeling super confident in this game. Marines and Marauders are getting surrounded. It looks like it's going to be bad news bears here for Cure as Rogue moves forward. Looks like Rogue's not confident enough to take a fight yet. But he's going to be able to replace his supply much, much easier than the Terran player. For Cure, it's basically just a survival game as long as he can hopefully get some good trades. He's making five STVs at a time now. He's got back up to 50, but he needs to get up uh, more units at this point as he's down on army spline. That's not a comfortable thing against a Zerg at this point in the game. We see Widowmine gonna get a shot off. Two Widowmines actually hit the mute as hard. They're gonna be able to uh, help push them away quickly. We see lots of lings for Rogue running right into a minefield. Very nice shots there by those mines. As long as those widow mines are kept alive by Kier, that's actually a really darn good trade for the Terran. Uh, these bases to the top right are the lifeline for Kier. Rogue hasn't attempted to snuff those out yet, but those ultras and bane links are looking suspicious. Uh, widow mine counterattack by Kier, trying to pull Rogue's attention away as he's trying to secure up this base once again. We see Kier, he's been able to build up a decent army once again. 115 supply to 120. It's not going to be an easy fight, but maybe he can take one here. This may be do or die for Kier as uh, he's looking to push forward once again. Going to shut down this base of Rogue. Rogue, however, secured this base down to the 6 o'clock position. Uh, just saying, right, you keep killing these top right bases. How about I take your 6 o'clock base since I got so much darn money. We see a massive Zerg swarm now going to be moving forward. Kier's going to have to take a beautiful fight. He is splitting rather well with his Marines and Marauders, but the problem is there's Mutas, there's Ultras. It's just such a nasty composition. Snipes are going to go down on some of the Ultras, but there's just a lot of Zerg right now. Kier's having to retreat. He does have a good chunk of reinforcements to the south. Going to help him out. The Ultras, Lings, and Banes are still going forward. Rogue is confident. Rogue wants to go for the win. Only one ultra remains as the Terran retreats to his planetary fortress. Looks like Kier took an all right trade there once again and he's been trading well this entire game but now as he attempts to float an orbital to the top right I'm not sure he'll be able to hold on to that position. He's pulling SCVs in a panic trying to keep that command center alive. Mutas are getting sniped down by the ghost. That's a loss there for Rogue. However Rogue able to just replace his lings so 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 quickly. Just has a massive swarm running towards his base. Uh, he's dodging out those widow mines. That's rather nicely done. A scary counterattack hitting the third base of the Terran now. Looks like Kier has secured this base to the top right. He needs to mule that like mad. Uh, and then he needs to try and deal with this counterattack. But it looks like the Zerg getting on top of the production of Kier. It just momentarily it looks like is going to be uh, rather troublesome. For the Terran, everything coming back for Kier, but everything is not a lot at this point. He's down to 59 to 104 supply. It's been a grueling game for both these players. Kier's played an amazing match, but this could be lights out for him. He's going to have to fight hard to clean up his production. His overstimmed Marines and Marauders, because he doesn't have many medivacs, are having a hard time cleaning this up. And he might actually not have enough to challenge the Mutas, uh, which is something I'm very concerned about. And if we do take a look, Rogue forces a lift on the top right, so that... Mule money is just not there. GG is going to get called. Cure taps out. Rogue is able to take the game after what was a fantastic TVZ. Uh, these Widow Mines here, by the way, getting just amazing shots off on the Lings of Rogue. A uh, very high kill count, but it wasn't enough. We saw Cure traded very efficiently, but just losing bases as a Terran without having a spare is just going to be lights out for you. And losing two bases is just massive damage. We saw Cure, he played. A very impressive game trying to come back. A nice mixture of aggressiveness and defensiveness, but Rogue just knew how to play the knew 
how to play this game. Like, he knew, all right, you don't have the economy as long as I keep throwing stuff at you, as long as I don't lose too many bases. That's why we saw him continuously trying to resecure these bases, taking this 6 o'clock location, because Rogue's aware that eventually he will run out of money if he just keeps trading poorly and not having the economy to back it up. So he kept his economy growing. He made sure he never got too low in the drone count, despite Kira's best efforts. But uh, yeah, in the end, it was just a beautiful, beautiful game between these two players. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a happy new year. Hit that like button if you haven't. Join the Discord, which is linked down below. Consider subscribing and joining the Bell Gang. Uh, just right next to the sub button is a bell icon. It gets you notified whenever I live stream, whenever I put up a new video, make a post, announcing a tournament, things like that. And then, uh, yeah, if you do want to support the channel, consider becoming a member. There's various perks you can get there. I'll see you guys next time. My name is Laughing Games.